Hi there, this is Rob at Reason101.net and I'm here to show you a little bit about how to create your own FX processor. Um, I recently created a Key Flux FX processor which uses, it, it's got 84 different effects chains in it and it's absolutely gargantuan. So here what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to show you how to create uh, one of your very own. I'm just going to put a couple of chains on it. I'm not going to put anything huge together, but this will give you an idea of how to set it up. So first I'm going to create a combinator, and then under that, under that I'm going to create a line mixer. Uh, underneath that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a split, so a sp spider splitter merger. Um, what I'm also going to do is up above here, I'm going to create, let's create, a looper. Let's open up a quick loop. Uh, let's do a different one here. What about the bomb squad? Okay, let's add that in. It's a little fast for my taste, so let's take it down to 80. Okay, so we've got that running. That's um, going to be our test case. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to patch it through to the effects processor. Then the two devices is going to go into the splitter side. And now what I'm going to do is underneath this, I'm going to create, I'm going to hold my shift key down. I'm going to create a Thor. Let's flip it around. Let's load up my initialize patch which initializes everything in Thor um, then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to create still holding shift down um, create a 14-2 mixer and I'm gonna pull all the levels down okay uh, you're gonna need to do this all the way across the mixer that's assuming you're gonna use 14 of these different uh, inputs for different effects. Um, what this is going to be, it's going to be a parallel process. Um, there's only two ways you can send audio in any system, whatever DAW you're working in, whatever um, system you're working in. You can send it um, parallel, which means that there's a bunch of uh, split audio signals, which is exactly what the spider does up here. It splits your signals. Or you can send it um, uh, in line or one after the other. So the signal goes in a chain. It goes one after the other. So uh, we're going to split this out and then we're going to create our audio chain. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to, underneath the mixer, let's create a delay. Uh, we don't want this on the aux channel. We're going to create um, another delay. Okay, and we don't want that connected either. Now, one of our splits is going to go into the first delay. We'll send another split into the other delay. Then we'll send it back up into here. It looks really fancy, but it's not. Then we're going to send the output to the first channel on the on the mixer. Okay, and also um, make sure that all the level trim knobs are set to 127. Okay, you can do that for all your channels. I'll just do them for a few. Uh, the other thing we're going to do is we're going to take the CV output, CV1, and we're going to send that into the level of the first one. We're going to rename this to C-2, which is going to be the name of the key that's going to trigger that specific effect. Okay, we'll open this up, and the source is going to be the MIDI key gate. It's going to be amount 100, and the destination is going to be CV output 1. Now, we're not going to put any amount over here, but we are going to scale it with the velocity. Um, and that's the MIDI key velocity. Okay. And now in here, in the combinator, what you're going to do is on this C2, which is your C minus 2, rather, this is your Thor, you want it to receive notes, but you're only going to let it trigger for the the first key on your keyboard, which is C minus two. That's the only key that will trigger this Thor, which in turn will trigger 
this delay system. Okay. Now what I'll do is I'll add another. Um, let's see. Let's add a different effect now. We'll add a Kong. I'm still holding my shift key down. Add a Kong drum designer. Let's open that up. Let's use some of the new effects that we have in there. Let's add a tape echo and let's add a ring modulator. Let's up the modulation. Let's tab over. What we want to do is take another split from our splitter. We're going to send it into the audio input and then we're going to send the main output to channel number two. Okay, so that's our second effect. And what you're going to want to do for the second effect, you're going to want to duplicate this Thor device. So duplicate it down here. Change this to C sharp minus two, which is the second key that we're going to trigger. Go back around, take the CV1, send that to the second effects chain. Go back in here, take the Kong. We don't want it to receive notes. We only want the Thors to receive notes. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this, and the range is going to be just one up above, which is C-sharp 2. And pull that all the way down. So now you have two effects. So if you want to hear the effects, you can run them. And then we can play on our keyboard. We can play C2. Uh, let's see. Let me just open up this. Uh, let's go to C2, C minus 2. And it's not playing. Why is it not playing? Okay, we've got that going back up. We've got the mixer going up here. Just going there. Going back out. Hmm. 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 Very odd. Are we on the right channel here? No, we're on the Octorex. Okay, so go back to the Combinator channel. Now play. <laughs> Oh, that's super loud. Okay, so we want to reduce this. Let's reduce the feedback. Let's send one right and one left. That's what we want to do. Okay, it's still a little loud. So let's change that. Let's right click around. Uh, what do we want to do? Let's create a maximizer. Let's disconnect this. Let's take our output from here. Going into the input. Flip around. Let's reduce it. Okay, so now that one's going to play that effect, and then the other, the next line is going to play this Kong effect down here. Okay, so um, essentially what's going on is this key, key A, is playing delays, and key W is playing the Kong filtering. And that's essentially what's going on. Uh, let's see. Okay. So now we can go in and we can start adding another effect to this whole chain. Let's add a... Uh, what do we want to add? Let's add a distortion. How about we do that? Now let's turn it down a little bit. Again, we're going to duplicate the Thor device. Okay, this is going to be D minus 2. Flip it around, send CV out, CV1 out to the level on the next channel. 
send another split and if you run out of splits here what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to duplicate that send one split over to here and you can keep making as many splits as you like that's the beauty of making these massive effects processors so send that back out and now we can listen on the next key because we need to take this move it up one more key move that all the way down okay let's just close these up so now you have three different keys that are going to play three different things so let's play S key that's your scream Now have three effects. You got three different keys. And you can play around with as many effects as you want. Um, you can add as many as your CPU can handle and just keep on adding them. If you get, if you have to add more mixers into the mix, <laughs> um, if you need more mixers, what you can do is just send the mixers to these different uh, channels. Here, just send all your other mixers over there into channel 2, channel 3, channel 4 on this main mixer, which is your, your main one here. And that's really all there is to it. That's how you build it. It's uh, really not as complicated as you might think. And uh, I hope this encourages you to try your own hand at uh, creating um, your own effects processor that's based on triggering different keys on your MIDI key controller um, over the Combinator track. The other thing you can do, um, since you've got these all set up with the MIDI velocity you can actually have the velocity affected as well what you need to do is for each of these um, for each of these Thors you'll need to um, well essentially you don't really need to do anything on, up here in the Thor what you can do is you can you raise the amount to 100 on the scale to scale the MIDI vo uh, value the MIDI velocity for all the Thors that you build okay and what this is going to do is this is going to allow you to make everything velocity sensitive so now when you play on your keys which I'm going to do let me just make sure I'm on the combinator track here which I am okay so now when I play this thing depending on how hard I play if I play really soft it's going to be really low if I play really hard tied to the velocity. So essentially it's velocity sensitive. Okay, now if you want you can actually create a global uh, button up here which is your velocity button. You can basically have it turn on and off and what you need to do for that is you need to go into the Thor over here and take button 1, go to the mod bus, uh, mod 1 scale amount and have this go from 0 Come on. From 0 to 100. So now the velocity will be on. It'll be scaling it at 100. If you turn it off, it'll turn this amount off and it won't be velocity sensitive. Okay, so this is with no velocity. No matter how hard I hit it, it's always at 100. Always at 100. If you turn the velocity on, that then makes it velocity sensitive. That's all there is to it. Hope you've enjoyed this. Um, come visit me at reason101.net where uh, I will show you more tips and tricks for Reason and Record users.